Hello folks, I hope you're all doing okay. Thank you for stopping by to watch this video. I hope you can stick around right until the end. My name is Jean and if you haven't seen one of my videos before, it is mostly unboxing videos that I do on this channel and that's what I've got with this particular video plus a little bit extra which I'll do at the end. So, how are you all doing? I hope you're all okay. Um, as I say, it's an unboxing that I've got on this video for the main body um, of what's going on. So, shall we get on with that now? Okay, so we have the June Boxu Box. So we might as well get straight on with it and see what we've got, haven't we? Uh, okay, so on first look, this is what we see. And we have the Boxu Snap Box Culture Guide. Also with that we get a postcard which is the same picture as is on the front of the Culture Guide. And it's also got a note from Danny Tang, the founder, um, saying thank you basically for buying the box. And it says, welcome to the foodie capital of Japan and the perfect place to celebrate Boxu's sixth birthday, Osaka. Boxu and I have fond ties to this corner of the country. We have our warehouses in Osaka, so it's always fun to see our boxes packed and shipped from this city to 100 countries around the world. And my spouse is from Osaka, so I love spending time and sharing meals with my in-laws there. I can't wait for you to dive into this themed box and savour the flavours of Osaka yourself. And if you'd love to gift an authentic Japanese experience, check out our Boxu Boutique gift boxes. And that's at www.boxu.com slash collections. Until the next box, happy snacking, Danny Tang founder. Right, shall we get on with what we've got in the box? Because it looks like it's a, a nicely stacked box. Okay, so opening the culture guide, we've got Night Out in Osaka, which is this month's theme. Then we have a couple of pages about discover where in Japan your snacks are from. And the Let's Learn Japanese page as well. Always very handy if there's little things you want to learn, mainly to do with the stuff that comes in your box. Okay, so first up, as long as I can find them, because they don't always come in the order that they are in the book in the box. So I'll have a little rummage around and see if I can find this one. Hopefully it won't take me too long. Uh, I'll tell you what, I might as well uh, do with what we've got as we're going, haven't I? Because, yeah, I'll be here all night otherwise. So, yes, it's night time that I'm filming this because I didn't get a chance to do it earlier on. OK, so we have got a Zuki Sweet Red Bean Latte. Uh, sip on this unique latte mix which has a base made with sweet azuki beans also known as red beans which are a popular mochi filling in Japan. The mix does not contain milk powder so you can add your favourite milk or milk alternative and then you've got some brewing instructions how to make it up. Next up, sorry I've got a bit of an itchy nose. Louis's been sat on my knee for a while and I think I might have got a few hairs from him up my nose. Um, it's going to be quick if I just skip through and when I see ones that I can see like I've got here now we have got this one it is called orange stick cake so pretty self-explanatory a little stick of a cake that's orange flavoured and it's got orange on the top of it and it says this tart and flavourful cake from Nakajima Kaishodo is delightfully light and fluffy, infused with orange inside and out. Real orange slices are baked on top, giving it a zingy freshness. And I must say, it does look nice. Uh, 
Uh, yes, it looks like I'm going to be flicking back and forth in this book, so apologies for that in advance. Next up, right, I may mispronounce this. Uh, Junkisa Gummy Lemon Squash by Ivory Package. Oops, that's this one. And it says, crafted in a sack of these sweet and tangy gummies, have a flavour reminiscent of lemonade and soda. You can even taste the carbonation. Right, I'm curious. I'm going to give it a try. It's in a resealable packet, so I don't have to eat it all straight away. Let's see what these are like, as long as I can oh, get it open. Right, we're nearly there. Let's see. Oh, these smell really nice. They smell. They smell a little bit like lemon washing up liquid, but I'm pretty sure that they don't taste like that. So that's what they look like. A little yellow cube. Oh wow. They're they've got a really weird balance between sour and sweet. There's the sourness from them being lemon sweets, but obviously they've got sugar in them and there's a bit of sugary stuff on the outside as well. But blimey, they don't half wake, wake your taste buds up. They're really nice. I'm not sure if there's, some, if there's something that I would go out and find myself in a shop if I was if I was in Japan looking for some sweets. But they are really nice. Okay. Then we have got a Saka Caramel and Coffee Sand Cookie. And it says, chocolate and caramel strike the right balance in this coffee-flavoured sandwich cookie. The coffee essence is perfect for a pick-me-up snack as we celebrate our birthday through the night. So, let's have a little... If I can open it. Yes, it's right. Okay. You can smell the coffee in, in it. But... It only gets strong after a few seconds of having the packet open. At first, it doesn't smell that strong at all. But it's a really nice coffee smell. It smells like, like fresh filter coffee. So uh, let's give it a try, eh? Mmm, it's really nice. I'm not going to eat the whole of it right now. I'll, I'll finish it off when I've finished filming this. But that's really nice. It it tastes like it's made with, with proper coffee, really nice coffee, as opposed to, say, doing a coffee cake with um, with granulated coffee. It, it, it's got a proper filter coffee flavour. It is nice. If you if you like coffee flavoured biscuits and things, that's a definite one to go for. The biscuits are, are a really nice coffee flavour. It's got a bit of a caramel running through it and there's a really nice coffee flavoured cream sandwich between the two biscuits. That's a definite yes. It's one that I would go and have a look for, especially if they were wanting something like a coffee flavoured biscuit. Okay, so next up, I think I saw this one earlier on in the book. Yes, so here we have potato snack takoyaki flavour. And it says these crispy potato snacks are a savoury interpretation of takoyaki, one of Osaka's classic street foods. Let's have a sniff. And in fact, 
no I think there is just the one package so I'm not going to open it right now plus I'm sort of a bit conscious about time and how long I could easily take eating things out of this box but it it's one it's one item inside the bag like a rice cracker type size so let's see what can we find next Okay, chocolate banana chips. Hmm. If you've if you've watched a few of my videos in the past, when I've been sort of presented in presented with banana things in snack boxes, you'll know I'm not too keen on it. Apologies if my that side of my face keeps going darker and then brighter. I've got the computer screen on and it keeps yeah going on and off so chocolate banana chips by yucca sweet ripe king banana chips are fried in coconut oil and covered with silky milk chocolate for a sweet and crunchy treat now i think they might be all right um go on I'll, i'm going to open it and give one a go so that I can tell you what I think to it. I don't tend to really buy things with banana in or banana flavoured things because I prefer bananas just as they come in the peel. So can't even smell banana in the packet, which is a plus to me because sometimes with banana flavoured things, you know when you've got a really ripe banana and it's like a, a bit of a sweaty foot smell you get with it that's one of the things that puts me off banana flavored things and things with banana in so this is what we've got oops <laughs> looks a little bit like a, a, a chocolate ear doesn't it a bit of a chocolate ear let's uh, give it a try i'll tell you what it tastes like Mmm. Mmm. These are actually really good. I'm really surprised at how good they are. I could certainly sit down and eat several packets in quick succession. They are that nice. And even though I don't tend to like bananary things, these don't taste like that. They've got a bit of a different taste. I can't put my finger on it, but it's not that intense banana flavour that you get in a lot of things. And they're definitely something that I would recommend if someone was saying, oh, you know, what sort of sweets do you think I ought to buy? You know, they've got a recommendation. Um, definitely 10 out of 10 would buy again. Really nice. And onward. So that's the second coffee sand biscuit. Uh, a Saka caramel almond crush cookie. And we've got two of these. And it says crisp biscuits, sandwich, soft, sweet cream, and crushed almonds and caramel are added on top. This is the ultimate party in your mouth. I'm going to have to give it a try. I've got two of them. So I've got one for later. I'm always a little bit intrigued with almond flavoured things and things with almond ink because sometimes it's a bit of a balancing act between um, the flavour of the almond as a nut and the flavour of the almond as it's going into marzipan because I, I really don't like marzipan. I never have done. So let's see what this is like. It smells, smells a bit like peanut brittle. Doesn't smell of the marzipan-ish almond smell. That's what it looks like. Here we go. Ah! 
that's really nice. It's got a feel of a thin wafer sandwich biscuit when you bite into it, which in effect that's what it is. <clears throat> the flavour is really nice. It's definitely not got that almond paste slash marzipan flavour like you might expect with almond flavour things sometimes. It's really nice. And if I was looking for a snack, just to something to pick up and, and just nibble on, that would be something that I would go for if I saw it in shop. It's really, really nice. Okay, and onwards. Here, we've got Ajikaruta honey and soy sauce. Apologies if I get this upside down. And it says, sweet and savoury mingled together in this deep fried rice cracker, flavoured with acacia honey and soy sauce. I'm not going to open it. I'm going to leave it as it is. Uh, one, again, that tiny thing. And two, because it's the only one in the box. Right, next up, as long as I can find it in here, we have got Takobi Kansai Umami Dashi. And that's this little fella. Uh, it wouldn't be a night out in Osaka without the city's most popular street food, takoyaki, which are fried octopus balls. And that's as in fried balls of octopus meat, not fried octopus testicles. Because they don't quite work the same way as mammals. <laughs> Made with the same ingredients, these rice crackers encapsulate the unique flavours of takoyaki. It's uncanny. I'm looking forward to eating them a bit later. We've got a little bit of a picture of what they look like there. Let me just see that with the, with the chopsticks. Okay, next up, a soccer tart cookie, which is this one. And it says, made up of three layers of crispy biscuits filled with white chocolate, this not-too-sweet cookie features words in Osaka's famous dialect decorated on top in milk chocolate. That looks like a, a little cute-to-eat later one. Right. Next up, let's see what we've got left. Oh, I saw that at the beginning, I think. Yes, here we are. We have got a caramel nut muffin. You can just see at that side and along the top here what it looks like. Looks a bit like a muffin with um, sugar crunch on it. But let's see what it says. Made with caramelised dough, this muffin is filled with almonds for a slightly savoury aroma and added crunch. Savour this confection as your breakfast the morning after our birthday bash. So yes, that looks like a nice to have and it is the only one in the box. <sighs> right. Let's make sure I've got the right one here. Yes, I have. Okay, so we've got here a dry dried mikan slice. And it says, try a new take on dried fruit. Bite into these dried mikan, which are these mandarin orange slices, as a refreshing palate cleanser. As you eat your way through a sack of street food inspired snacks. Let's have a look. So you can see before I open it, it's a little bit of um, dried mandarin. It's not got a strong smell, so it's not something that you open them and go, whoa, God, I can definitely tell what that is from the smell because it doesn't smell that strong at all. And, it, and even out of the packet and this close to my nose, I still can't smell anything. There's no, there's no smell coming from it at all. Let's have a try. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, definitely. That's so nice. 
Ah, that's interesting. On the common algens, we've got fish. And it says it's not vegetarian. Um, yeah. Can't say I could taste anything fishy in it because I definitely could not. The mandarin flavour comes through quite slowly. You don't get smacked straight in your mouth with it. It's after you've had a little bit of a crunch round on it. And it is so nice. That would be something just to, nice to sit and snack on. You know, several packets. Um, but you might start feeling sick after a few of them. But gosh, yeah, so nice. Really, really nice. Definitely uh, recommended. Let's see see if we can find this one we're not far from the end of the box now no, that's not that sweet potato apple pie cookie an exclusive collaboration between Furuta Seika and La Popo Farm a popular sweet potato store in Osaka. These cookies combine an apple pie with Japanese sweet potatoes for a comforting snack. Warm it up in the toast of that freshly baked taste. This, you'll be glad to know, hasn't got anything fishy in it. <laughs> Although it does have some common allergens like milk, eggs, wheat and soy. Let's have a sniff. Ooh. That smells really nice. It's a really... It's a very gentle flavour, smell even, and it it smells faintly of something like a an apple pie with say a milky crust. That's what it looks like. And here we go. Hmm. weird that is very strange but not in a bad way you can definitely tell the sweet potato in it you can also definitely tell that there's apple in it it's weird out, out to me anyway it definitely tastes of combination of the two things and in theory in our westernised palette anyway they wouldn't go together but in practice in that little cookie they go together really really well and and they taste lovely definitely want to um, sit and eat a few of with a cup of tea yes i do like them right next up we have got scone Crash Crispy Pizza. Well, I think Scone is the brand name. This is what the bag looks like. And it says there's nothing like a slice of pizza at the end of a night out. So we included this addictive pizza flavoured snack. Each bite has a crumbly, crispy, crunch texture and is packed with rich layered flavours of tomato and basil. It's not a resealable pack, so I'm not going to open it here. But you get a little picture of what it meant to what it's meant to taste like on the back there at the bottom. So yeah, that's going to be crispy. Za is tomato cheese pizza flavour accented with basil. Mmm. Yes, I'm interested to see what that tastes like, but I'm not going to open it right away. What's this? Ah, oh, right. Kaki no Tani chocolate. That is this little packet. And it says, try this new spin on a classic Japanese bar snack. Crescent shaped Kaki no Tani rice crackers with milk chocolate kneaded in. The flavour of these crisps are rem reminiscent of those of a chocolate pretzel. So it's a firm little thing and it 
in the picture it kind of looks like um, a little sweet out of a box of chocolates. It's dark chocolate. It says it's milk chocolate in here, but it smells like dark chocolate. It's probably got a higher percentage of cocoa solids than our chocolate normally has. So let's give it a try, eh? That's really strange. It's, if you imagine something like a chocolate flavour rice crispy square, but they got the, cho the, the, the ratio of chocolate to rice krispies a bit muddled up and the rice krispies, the rice krispies that they did put in it were three times the size of a normal rice krispie. Very strange. Tastes nice. Excuse me one minute, my throat's a bit dry. They do taste nice. The chocolate is really good as well. It's not an inf an, uh, an intense smack you in the face flavour chocolate. Um, it's it's nice. It's like a it's it tastes like a really good quality chocolate. But then you've got these big, um, for want of a better phrase, rice krispies, big pieces of puffed rice in with the chocolate which kind of makes it feel a bit weird but it's not bad it's not weird in a bad way what we got left just got one different thing if i can find it in here here we are so this is pie manju sweet potato and And get it the right way around because there's some English writing at the top of the packet. That's what the packet for this fella looks like. And it says, This snack is a unique twist on a classic Japanese treat called manju, which is a filled flour based pastry. This version uses a pie crust as its outer layer and is filled with Japanese sweet potato. So it's a little bit like a packet of sweet potato pie. But there's only that one in the box, and because it's it's a fair size for the packet, I'm not going to open it. As a, I've tried quite a few of the snacks, and I don't want people to get fed up watching this video. So anyway, yes, that's that's it for this month's box to box. We've got a couple of pages of culture at the back of the culture guide. We've got a dazzling dot on Bori, larger than life signs, street food paradise and spectacular sightseeing. Um, and then Japanese gifts for every occasion. We've got a little bit of a, an advert at the back here for Boxer Boutique. And on the back, <coughs> excuse me, we've got next month's theme haiku, haiku hint. And it says Midori Whispers, Kyushu's Gentle Embrace, Season Blooms with Grace. So that sounds like something quite interesting. So I do hope you've enjoyed watching this video and hearing what my take on the snacks that I tried was and what I thought to them. As always, um, I bought the box myself. It wasn't part of any PR deal, it wasn't gifted to me, and I used my own money to buy it. So all the opinions um, that I've talked, that I've mentioned here in this video, they are my own opinions, and they're in no way coloured by any sort of deal from me getting this box. It's all my own opinions. So, uh, yeah, pretty good. Um... If you don't already subscribe to or buy Boxu Boxes and you're watching one of my Boxu unboxing videos for the first time in this video, 
I will leave downstairs in the info block my what's the what's the phrase I'm trying to look for my friends code and if you decide to sign up for your own oh crikey sorry it's getting getting a bit late in the evening I'm losing my words um if you sign up for your own subscription you can get them in I think it's six uh, the three three six and twelve months you can choose from but then there's also a rolling one which just goes month on month that's the one that I get so you know it's up to you if you decide to get it which one you want to get um I'll leave my friend's code downstairs so you can get a little bit knocked off your first box um and see what you decide um having a subscription's not a bad thing because with with each box you get you get an amount of points um, added on to your online page let's say your your account page um, and there's various other things that you can do that will get you more points like say adding your birthday in that sort of thing um, like in Boxu on Instagram and Facebook and that sort of thing the more interactions you do with it the, the more points you get and obviously with each box that you get you get more points added on and you can use those points uh, by, um, against getting stuff from Boxer Boutique which is not a bad deal because um, they do things in there on Bo in Boxer Boutique that have been usually been in past boxes and they also do things like like gift packs like say for people that like cats or that like dogs things like that um or manga themed things that sort of thing um but it's up to you if you want to have a look and you want to use my code to get a bit of money off your first box have a think about it anyway have a look if you fancy and just having a look on on the box through website doesn't commit you to anything it's just a look isn't it and and looking doesn't cost anything but if you decide that you want to go a bit further and get yourself a subscription you've got my code to go through if that's what you fancy so again thank you for stopping by and if it's, if this is the first time you've watched one of my videos hi and thank you for staying this long and if you're already subscribed hello again thank you for coming back i really am grateful for this I would really, really appreciate it if you've enjoyed watching this video, if you give the little thumbs up icon a click to show that you've liked it. Maybe leave me a comment. I will do my best to answer back as quickly as I can, because for some reason I can't always see comments that people have left on my, um, my page with the videos. I'm not quite sure why and i can't really find anything about it i don't know if the comments that um youtubers thought are a bit dodgy and so they've blocked them appearing or what but yes i've not i've not managed to work it out yet uh but yes if you have got this far leave me a little emoji down in the comments and I don't want it just to be any emoji. I've looked through the foodie ones and there's one with a slice of cake with a strawberry on top of it. If you put that picture down, I'll know you got this far and I can say thank you. Now, there was one other thing that I was going to show you, wasn't I? Uh, and I mentioned it earlier on and that was as far as I got at the time. Now... Sorry, the screen's just come back on. You might have seen as I've been lifting packets up and stuff, my nails. Yes, there, there is a different nail varnish on each hand. These came through yesterday, the ones that um, I'd um, had on pre-order from Rainbow Connection UK, which is one of the companies that I, <coughs> excuse me, get some of my nail varnishes from. So there's this one. It's 
it on the camera on my phone at the moment and with the, the light from my little ring lamp here it looks really pale but it has got an amazing colour shift to it and it is this one it's by Lumen see if I can get it to there we go and it's called Morpho Glow and it's meant to sort of look like the colour shift on a Morpho butterfly's wings <clears throat> and you, you see blues in it, there's purples, there's greens, um, there's pinks It's it's got an amazing colour shift to it, you can't really tell very well um, with the with the light shining on it there but I think you can probably just make out the the different colour that my nails look to what is in the bottle itself on my nails I can't remember if it's three or four coats that I put on but all I've got underneath those coats is a base coat there's no other colour nail polish on underneath the um, coats of nail, party, nail polish now the other one that I've got on this hand now you can't really tell you can't really tell very well there's there's a very slight purple shift to it this one is by Dam Nail Polish let me just move my head out of the way And it is called merely a mirage and the polish itself is UV reactive so if you're out in the Sun it should go a deeper shade of grey this is what it looks like just in our house at night time because it's what time are we at now it's just after quarter to twelve um, on Thursday night and that's what it looks like just in the light from my little ring um, lamp and the big light in the front room uh, but when you've when you've got it on and you can see it not through a camera lens or whatever it's it looks like a really beautiful pale purple pearl and it is really nice and I'm very interested to see what it's going to look like out in the daylight in the morning uh, because I'm I'm out uh, volunteering tomorrow morning so I'm really interested into what it's going to look like when I leave the house and I'm in proper daylight as long as it's not raining of course but yeah out um, just like this you can just about tell there like that little bit of a colour shift but yeah it is it's a it's a beautiful colour and even without it darkening I really like it like that so there you go that's what those two look like Morpho Glow and just Mirage um I will put the website link to uh Rainbow Connection UK downstairs as well so if anybody wants to have a look on there um, if you are a person that likes to wear nail polish or if you want to get some as a gift for someone uh, Rainbow Connection do have a loyalty scheme so for however much you buy you get a certain amount of points and you can you can use those points and build them up towards future purchases if that's what you fancy um, I think this um, this particular purchase of these two bottles I ordered them in February I think it was either February or March um, and it was just waiting for them coming in for me to get them um, but yeah uh, advance orders I'm not sure if there are any of them still available on the website but as I say I'll have a look I'll put the the, the a uh, web address for Rainbow Connection UK downstairs so you can have a look on it if you want but there's nail polishes for anybody that likes any sort of nail polish there's there's um, various nail potions 
let's say there's base coats and top coats there's uh, things with vitamins in to help your nails grow I got this from them, uh, Clean Start Gel Cuticle Remover, which is really good for if you get overgrown cuticles, just to help them, help get rid of them. I've come to the, the end of this one, uh, Cuticula, which is an unscented silk base coat. Uh, I've got one here from Ethereal, and this one is Aquarius, which is my birth, birth, birth sign. <laughs> and my my um yeah my my astrological sign let's say um this is a really nice um steel bluey purpley um holographic one which i actually took off earlier today so that i could put these on what else have i got here uh i got some some pop liquid glass top coat absolutely brilliant top coat uh, Coloras de Carol uh, liquid magic base coat with vitamin B12 which is really good so yes got all sorts on here uh, Unt nail nutrition essence which it's in a little drop of bottle and you use it as, as nourishment for your nails uh, you just see if I can get some out and show you you just it's not coming out, is it? Uh, but yeah, you just drip it onto your nails and rub it in. Um, got this I ILNP Lock Up Ultra Bonding Base Coat. Absolutely fantastic for grabbing hold of and keeping grabbed hold of your nail varnish when you put it on over this base coat. Absolutely fantastic. But yeah, there's, oh God, there's so many different things on there. I just recommend you have a look. Even if you don't want to buy anything, just have a look. It's immense. Absolutely amazing. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling on. And as I say, if you got this far, thank you. Don't forget the cake emoji. I will have a little look to see if anybody that's watched actually got this far and put the cake emoji on. And I will see you soon. Thanks again for watching. Do take care of each other, everyone. Look after yourselves. It's still a very weird world out there. The weather is very iffy, so maybe take your scarf and your brolly. Um, and I would probably take gloves as well, because it's still got a tendency to be chilly. So, thank you. Sleep well. or Have a great day, whatever time of day it is you're watching this. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.